Okay, we're good. All right. Good evening, everyone. Okay. It's, uh, it's Brian Nero. Uh It is 7 o'clock, and so we're going to get started. Um, before we uh, get into the minutes, I just want to uh, do a quick roll call to see who's on. I know Bridget is here, Dylan, Margaret, and Bonnie. Um, Chris, are you on? David? Jamie? I'm here. Okay. Who's that? Jamie's here? Yeah, Jamie's here. Okay, okay. and McKay? Okay, well, we have enough to, to begin, so we will, uh, we'll, let's get started. Uh, first, I want to uh, welcome our new members. We have uh, Margaret Horton, who is um, a new commissioner. Welcome, Margaret. And we have uh, Bonnie Rotelli, who is going to be our new liaison for the Board of Education. So welcome, Bonnie and Margaret. And uh, Thank you, you know, guys. Look, look, Thank looking you. forward to good things. Absolutely. So uh, first on the agenda is the um, minutes of the December 16th meeting. Um, I know they went out a little bit later than usual, um, I think just about 10, 15 minutes ago. So did anyone... Did everyone get a chance to take a look at them, or should we push this uh, this off? Did it, anyone get a chance to look at the uh, minutes? Uh, unfortunately, I did not. I just see they just yeah, came I out didn't, like 20. I didn't minutes. either. Yeah, yeah okay. sorry. I didn't get a chance. All right. I think, um, Kelly, we are going to, since, since they did, uh, were distributed so late, I think we um, uh, should hold off on um, making, uh, accepting the minutes, and we'll just put it on to the next meeting. Okay. All right. Okay. hate to do that, but I, I think that's only fair since uh, – we didn't get a chance to look at them. Um, no, my apologies. Right. Um, no, no, no problem. No problem. We'll just do that in February. Um, okay, next I up, um, I'm not sure if there's any public with us, but um, if there um, are any members of the public who would like to bring up anything, now's your chance. And uh, this would not include anything that is already listed on the agenda, but if there's anything um, new or different, Hearing nothing, we are going to push on through. This can be a quick meeting, I think. Um, uh, new business, to hear and act upon the Fairfield Rotary Club, their request to have a paddleboard and kayak fundraiser on September 11th, 2021, 8 a.m. Jennings Beach. Is their representative from the Rotary Club on with us? Yes, I am. All right, uh, sir, my name you, is uh, Bob Vossler. Uh, I'm a long-term resident of Fairfield. Uh, I currently serve as a director, board of director of the Fairfield Rotary Club. And uh, I'm also chairman of the event that we're going to talk about tonight. Okay. Bob, if you would, um, for our benefit, if you would just state your address for the record. Yes, I live at 1 Ehrman Street in Fairfield. That's E R M I N E. Thank you. All right, so if you could give us a little information about the proposed event. Yes, I will. I'd be glad to. By the way, I want to thank you for giving me the time to present to you. Uh, I know it's a kind of a, a, a very interesting night for all of us with the swearing in of a new president, so I will try to be as, as brief and uh, as uh, succinct as possible. For those who don't know uh, about Rotary, uh, I wanted to mention that uh, Rotary has been around since 1905 and has, re, uh, re, has uh, uh, Rotary clubs in about 35,000 uh, cities and towns across the world in about 200 countries and geographic regions. Our club was founded in 1939 
And over these years, it's been providing humanitarian, educational, health, and housing support to many nonprofits and uh, organizations uh, in Fairfield and also uh, beyond our borders, in other words, internationally. Uh, this year, we've allocated and, uh, I guess, allocated and spent about $40,000 in Fairfield. Uh, we support things like the food pantry, uh, student scholarships, food drives, read aloud for children, support for veterans, uh, many local community grants, uh, clothing drives for the needy, and internationally we've been involved with the eradication of polio, uh, supplying clean, clean uh, water to uh, countries without it, and uh, certainly, we've also been involved in, in uh, medical help for foreign countries. Uh, most of these activities are funded primarily by fundraisers, like our recent one, which was a shred fest uh, held at the First Church Congregational. I don't know whether anybody was there or not. But uh, anyhow, uh, we raised some money there. Uh, this Friday, we're having a virtual beer fest, which I'm, <laughs> I'm very anxious to see how that's going to pay off or how it's going to work anyhow. Uh, from the standpoint of what uh, we're attempting to do is, uh, as mentioned, uh, we're planning, we're in the st planning stages, I should say, of having a, um, a paddle board and a kayak funding event and we're in search of a good location which would be safe and uh, meet the requirements that we have for doing this. We've looked around and uh, we have concluded that the best spot for us would be in our own hometown in Fairfield and in Jennings Beach because of the parking capabilities and because it appears to be a prime location for the things that we're trying to, you know, the, the contestants that we're going to have, either in, a, in a paddle boards or kayak, uh, uh, via, uh, kayak, uh, I guess you'd call them boats. Um, the uh, first step, of course, is to address the site, and uh, that's why I'm here tonight. Uh, we have set, as mentioned, we've set uh, tentatively, tentatively September, uh, provided or selected September 11th uh, of this year. And uh, there's a, several reasons for it. Uh, first of all, uh, we think there'll be a less crowded situation because the beaches, I guess, will be officially be closed. Um, the, uh, also, uh, we've selected uh, the time to be approximately low tide which will give us the opportunity to use the reef as a natural barrier. Um, we generally have westerly winds that run from west to east, and the, if you've been to the beach at low tide, you'll know that the, the uh, reef uh, pops up, and uh, the waters inside the reef, on the, I guess on the eastern side that we'll be talking about or uh, using, uh, would be much calmer. Um, other things that we're concerned about is knowing what we're doing. This will be our first one. And uh, it, we have a young man in our club, Jay uh, Tinney. Uh, Jay, are you here? Hey, Bob, I'm, I'm here, yeah. Oh, hear okay, thank you, Jay. Uh, Jay okay. is, uh, is a, a very experienced paddleboard, um, what would you call it, paddleboarder, but... Um, we have him to uh, certainly guide us in this. Uh, we have one of my sons, actually, uh, Matt Vossler. Uh, Matt is one of the, the, he began the Swim Across the Sound, and uh, from there he went into Swim Across America. They now have 20 events all over the country, and he's been involved um, with these and travels to them. Um, He's uh, functioned as the safety officer 
Uh, one of the last ones that he was involved in was a swim through the Golden Gate Bridge in, in California, and that was interesting. Um, we also have a young man, a fellow by the name of Dave Keith, who is a um, local painting contractor here. And um, Dave has held four of these, and so we know that there will be a lot of expertise involved uh, with the, the, this group of three people. Uh, the things that we have to address in addition to location are the facilities that will require will be required at the at the at the event. Uh, things like accounting and registration, course setup. Uh, the course we plan to have will run parallel to two courses actually. One will run, and this first one is designed for less experienced paddlers or kayakers, and it'll run along the beach. Um, out to the reef, and then return. Uh, the second uh, event will occur uh, after that. Well, I'm not quite sure whether it's which, which one is going to come first. That's to be decided. But the, 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 uh, the other one is for the experienced uh, paddlers and uh, kayakers, and that's going to run uh, along the beach, similar to the one I just described, but they'll make a left turn, uh, head out towards Penfield Reef, uh, and then come back uh, the same route. Uh, we're going to have markers, uh, buoys, so to speak, I guess you'd call them, uh, marking off the course so they, you know the, the, the uh, contestants will know exactly what's going on. Um, we also will have to provide snacks and beverages for the participants. Um, in addition to the three uh, consultants, I'll call them, uh, we're going to have uh, a number of uh, Rotarians and other volunteers involved. The, uh, one of the things that would be very, it will be very important will be the uh, boats that we'll have to keep an eye on things. We plan to have three or four boats. Uh, they'll be rather small boats, uh, probably uh, around the 20-foot uh, size. And these boats will be available in the event they, that somebody has to be pulled out. Uh, since we'll be using kayakers, they are also used as uh, uh, facilities for people that may need some trouble, may be in trouble. Uh, we're also going to um, um, have, we're hoping to have police there for any traffic control and also EMTs just in case, of there's, in case there's a medical emergency. Uh, we've already applied to the Coast Guard in New Haven for their, um, for, to review our plan. It's much more, it's a very detailed uh, application that you have to fill out. I, I was just amazed at the length of it. But anyhow, we're awaiting their, um, their approval or any questions they may have. <clears throat> All right. Thank you very um, much. That was a very – oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I thought you were done. Well, I'm just about done. Um, the, the pacing item right now is to secure the location and to allow the detailed plans. And believe me, there's a lot of detail that goes into something like this. So we have uh, – we've been we, – I contacted originally uh, Mr. Anthony Calabrese, um, who the director of parks and recreation who referred me to uh, Kelly Brown, who incidentally is fantastic, and she responded uh, so quickly to anything, any communication that I had with her, and I thank her for that. In addition to that, we um, will be in contact with uh, Justin Cathcart, who I personally know because I have a, I've been a boater down at the. Um, in Fairfield for the last 40 years, so I know the waters very well, and uh, I'm confident that we can have a very successful and uh, safe uh, event. And of course, we hope to make a lot of money because it's going to come right back into the Fairfield. So that's basically it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and I, once again, I thank you for your your time. All right. Well, I appreciate that. And, Kelly, I hope you took copious amounts of notes, including that uh, compliment that uh, went your way for a minute. <laughs> yes, thank um, you very much. 
Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Rossler. That was very detailed and complete, and uh, I'm sure we, there might be a, a couple of questions for you. Um, actually, I only have one question, then we'll open it up to everyone else. Um, and I'm pretty certain I know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask it anyhow. So um, for the experienced um, uh, paddleboarders, you're going to go to the Penfield Reef and then out around the Penfield Reef Lighthouse. Um, no, they're the, not going around the lighthouse. They're, they'll, they'll go in that general direction. But uh, the, the plan is to have a buoy that would be uh, north of the lighthouse so that they never go by the lighthouse, but they stay okay. within, almost within the reef, uh, the exposed reef. Okay. All right. Thank you. You know, the, the written, the written um, explanation said turn south to the lighthouse. So that was my, my question still remains. Um, yeah. the, uh, the channel for the boats coming out of the marina, if they were going to come out and head west, um, the, is that generally, do they generally travel south of the lighthouse further into their sound? I'm just well, curious uh, if there would be any um, any uh, worries about um, the direction the boats would be coming. Well, the uh, a couple of things there. Uh, there, are, there are actually is, is Justin is, is Justin on the line with us? I don't okay, believe I'm he sorry. is. Okay. Uh, Go ahead, coming out of the uh, marina, as you pass the the um, you, you know the um, what do you call it the, the, you know the not the uh, yeah, I can't you know, bring there's a in other words the, the pile of rocks wow. that uh, you walk on right. going out into you know going out towards the sound beyond those uh, there is a series of buoys I think there's four or five buoys right. that require you before you turn right or west requires you to go considerably out uh, past the, the, uh, the, the end of the, um, the peninsula that goes out in that direction. Uh, in addition to that, the tide will be low, and uh, pretty much most uh, experienced boaters stay pretty far away from the shore because of the depth of the water. Uh, we also um, will have... Uh, as I mentioned, three or four boats that will be patrolling the area uh, from the start all the way out to where they turn around close to the lighthouse. And uh, they will certainly wave off boats and let the boats know that uh, the, the area is being uh, used by uh, people in the water. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, to the commission, does anyone have any questions for Mr. Rossler? All right, hearing none, does anyone want to make a motion um, for uh, this excuse event? Excuse me just a minute. Uh, I, I wonder, uh, Jay is with us, and I mentioned Jay is an experienced paddler. I wonder if he would like to add anything to what I have to say. Um, Bob, I mean, I, you know, you're really comprehensive. Thanks for doing that. Um, yeah, I mean, not, not much to add. I think, you know, again, the first step is just to kind of get, get a sense if we can move forward and then, uh, you know, the planning would, would really commence, I think. Uh, and Jay, your, um, last name and address for the record, please. Yes. Uh, last name Tinny, T-I-N-I. Um, I'm at 544 Rollins Road in Fairfield. Thank you. Okay, back to the commission. Would anyone like to make a motion uh, to uh, approve this? Mr. Yeah, McKay, I'll, I'll make the motion. Okay. Oh, McKay, welcome. All right. This is Jamie. I can second. And, okay. All right. Um, any um, further discussion uh, amongst the public? Any further discussion 
um, to the commission. All right, then I'm going to just uh, run down the list, and if you would either give me a yay or a nay. I don't know if any, if anyone else has arrived, um, so I'm just going to go through the entire list. Um, Bridget? Bridget, are you still there? Yeah. Um, okay. Sorry, yes. Yeah. Was that a yes, you're there, or a yes for the motion? <laughs> both. Yes, for both. <laughs> okay, thank you. Chris, are you the on? Chris yes, uh, yeah, yeah, my, yes, my answer is yay. Okay, David, have you arrived? Dylan? Uh, sorry, I was on mute. Uh, yes for me. All right, thank you. Jamie? Uh, yes. Okay. Thank you. I vote yes. Margaret? Uh, yes. Bonnie? That's a yay for me. All right, and I'm also a yay. Congratulations, Ms. Rossler, and I hope you have a wonderful event. Thank you all very much. You're welcome. We appreciate it. And all if right. anybody is interested in joining Rotary, they should call me, contact me. Uh, I'll tell you what my telephone number is, 203-259-7760, and we'd love to have anyone or all of you join our Rotary Club. It's a great organization, and uh, I think you'd find it to be very interesting to be part of. Super. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Um, all right. Uh, Bonnie, you are up with the Board of okay. Education report. Uh, I'm going to uh, okay. sign off, if I may. Oh. I'm sorry? Uh, I'm going to sign off, if I may. Yes, yes. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening, and stay safe. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. All right. Bonnie, I'm putting you on the spot. I'm not sure if you came prepared for a report or not, but... This is this is your spot. Ah, oh. <laughs> um, not entirely ready, but that's okay. Um, we just started our budget meetings, so the superintendent proposed his budget. Uh, we had our first um, meeting to go over the first set of questions last night. We have another meeting, uh, another two meetings coming up next week, um, and uh, let's see, this week. Well, beginning of January started the new schedule for secondary. Um, so middle school and high school started going in um, half day Wednesday. And uh, yesterday started the new elementary schedule where the elementary students um, started five days a week for half days. So... That's about as detailed as I have for you right now, but um, I'm, uh -huh. I'm sure next month will be much more detailed. All right. Thank you. That was fine. Um, okay. okay. And um, is Anthony with us? Yep, I'm here. Um, okay. I, good evening, everyone. You were so quiet. Good evening, time, everyone. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, um, everybody should have Mr. Chair, Mr. Topic. Chairman. Can I ask? Can I ask a question to Bonnie? If that's okay. Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, I neglected to do that, and I don't know who this is speaking. This is uh, this is Chris Chris McCoy. All right, sorry, Chris. Uh, yes. Proceed. Uh, um, hi, Bonnie. How are you? Thank you. I'm good. How are you? Great, great. Uh, I have a 12 year old and a 10 year old, so I have a middle schooler. Mm -hmm. It's great to have my fifth grader back in school from nine to one. Is there yes. any discussion about having middle schoolers in five days a week from a similar time frame? Um, I'm getting yeah. asked a lot of questions. Yeah. Um, I would love to see them back in school. Uh, personally, <laughs> um, we have uh, discussions, but I think right now, um, they're going to see how the elementary school goes 
in this new schedule. And, Correct. And um, we will be bringing probably middle school, I mean, hopefully middle school and, and uh, high school into the discussions in the future. Um, okay, so, so, so the, 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 one thing, the one thing I get asked a lot from, like, parents through my wife, on, like, mm-hmm. you know, when they know that I'm a part of a commission – yeah. And I'd like to be give them an educated, you know, answer or guess is why the elementary and why not the middle and high school? And I, I don't have an answer for that. So if you could just kind of help me out. Sure. Well, I think it gets significantly more difficult in the high school because of all of the, the different classes that the kids are in. Um, cohorting and keeping kids in similar groups is easier when they're younger. Um, you know, at the high school, all the kids could be in, you know, they get to pick their classes. So, um, I know that gets much harder. Um, and I think, uh, you know, I think it's, um, and statistically speaking, as far as COVID goes, younger kids, um, there's less transmission for younger kids. Um, it's when you look at the numbers, um, especially the the second sort of wave and rise we had a lot with our um, teenage population going into college age, that sort of 18 to 22 year year old um, age range, we saw sort of an increase in the second wave. So. We're not really seeing that with the numbers for the younger kids. So I think that has a lot to do with it. Um, but, All right. You know, thank you. I mean, that's, fingers that crossed was, that, for the, yeah, I'm keeping yeah. my fingers crossed that the elementary goes well and we don't see any, you know, spikes in cases and transmission. Um, so and hopefully it will lead to further discussions for our older kids too, especially our middle schoolers. It makes perfect sense. Thank you. Yep. Okay, before we uh, get back to the director, any other questions for Bonnie? Okay, now to the director and program reports. Thank you. Um, Everybody should have received an advanced copy of the uh, director's report. Um, I won't read it word for word uh, since you all have it, but uh, our spring uh, digital spring brochure did go out. We emailed it out to our uh, 26,000 or so uh, people on our email blast. Um, Feedback has been really positive for the programs that we're offering. Obviously, um, with all the COVID restrictions and the uh, mandates and uh, everything you could possibly think of that the uh, government can throw at us, they they have. Our pavilions still are not open, um, but the programs that we're running, you know, we are following all protocols that we're supposed to be. you know, as best as we can. Uh, we are planning to offer summer camps, um, hopefully as close to the traditional format as possible. Um, but whatever restrictions are in place, we will uh, follow and run with. Um, we've got a big Easter um, virtual 5K that we're trying to run. Um, so everybody will be able to do that on their own after they're, um, they're signed up. Uh, currently working on the special events calendar. Uh, I'm, again, trying to hold the summer concert series, uh, peanut butter jam, sand jam movie nights, all those uh, staples of summer that we like to do. Um, again, trying to follow all the mandated guidelines that we have. Um, and then uh, as far as budget season is going, like I mentioned last month, we have um, already met with the first select woman. Um, so her team um, should be putting together and releasing their budget very soon, I believe the first week or so in February, I believe her budget is scheduled to come out. So um, I think our discussions went very well. Um, I didn't hear of anything that she was thinking of cutting. Um, at least nothing's been brought to my attention yet. Um, so that's promising. Um, and, you know, it's, it is a long budget season, so um, I will keep you guys posted every month. That's all I have. Happy to take any questions. Any questions, Mr. Mr. Chair? Yeah, Mr. Chair, this is Chris. I have a uh, question for Anthony. Certainly. For the, for the director. Mr. Director, how are you? Happy New Year. Good. How are you doing, Chris? Good. So um, I'm a basketball coach in town for boys and girls, and there's a lot of questions from parents 
personally to me, my wife. And uh, I've heard rumors that you guys may be looking to get the basketball season park and rec on. Is that true? That is Perhaps. true. Uh, it's yeah, with the, well, I, I've asked the Board of Ed for gym space. Um, they have not given us any gym space yet. I think they're still deciding what to do with the high school sports. Um, CIAC did release and approve uh, their, their winter season plans for basketball and the other winter sports. Um, however, the one caveat that was in that guidance was it said specifically if your town – is in the uh, category red, which you guys aren't uh, sure. I, I believe 99% yeah. of the towns in, Fair, in uh, Connecticut are in red. So those towns that are in red right. actually need to have the, um, someone from the school district, typically the superintendent or a representative, and the local health department sign off on the sports league. So um, I believe we're still waiting to hear from the health department. I don't see why they wouldn't um, allow sports, even though we are in the red category. The only towns around us that I know are pumping the brakes, uh, Norwalk has postponed their decision, uh, Stanford has put off their decision, and I believe Bridgeport is going basketball only. So um, hopefully we'll, in the next couple of days we'll know which direction Fairfield is going, and I'm anticipating if they're going to go with high school sports, then they're going to let us have some space for rec sports. But um, – that's my very optimistic outlook. All right. And then, and, and like, the second question on addendum is uh, Wakeman. And, you know, I know Wakeman's kind of their own thing, but obviously, you know, we're pretty tight with them. Have you heard anything about them putting on a basketball season? Because, again, parents are asking me as a commissioner, and I don't know. I have not had any conversations um, – with Wakeman or anybody from their staff. I know they do the remote learning academy, or they have their own re- remote uh, learning village or academy there. Um, so I think yep. that probably plays a large role into whether or not they would um, run a basketball league. But I have not had that conversation, so I can't speak on behalf of them. All right. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions okay. for the director? Sorry, Chris, this is Bridget. I just wanted to let you know if um, you weren't aware Triple Double is offering a basketball league for the winter. I don't know if that would fit into your kid's um, age I'm category, actually co- but... Yeah, I'm a coach in that one. That's why I was asking. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. We've been playing quite a while, but, you know, again, like Triple Double is more geared towards more advanced kids and... I have a son that plays that, but my daughter is more geared towards park and rec. So right, exactly. a yeah. lot of, a lot of families that are asking like, Hey, we don't want to do the AAU route and spend a thousand dollars. What's going on. So that, that's, so I, I have one of each. I have, you know, I'm yeah, right in that realm. I'm, I'm coach. <laughs> I'm coaching one of them. So it's, uh, you know, again, I, I coach the park and rec and I coach, the triple double the AAU route. So that's, that's kind of like on both sides of, of, of the realm. So that, yeah, exactly. Like I think everyone, if we can get that park and rec league going on, you know, God blessing or God willing the, the, the state, um, I think parents would be happy. They, everyone just needs to get their kids out of the house, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Very good. So, and the final item uh, for the good, good of the order, um, does anyone have anything that they want to discuss? Hearing nothing, we are, we are done. Thank you, everyone. Thank have you. a nice evening, and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Take care. Good night. Thanks, everyone. Good night.